What's going on everyone? About 65% of the S&P 500 closed in the green today and it was just a crazy day all around. As many of you already know, uh, the Nvidia stock rally has just continued even more as this stock blasted past the $1,200 mark and it is now the world's second most valuable company. They're beating out Apple now and there is a whole bunch of hype with this one, especially because because of the upcoming stock split in just a couple days. So stick with us for this uh, segment because we have a lot to talk about with this stock, but we have a handful of other crazy things going on with the market as well. So again, we have a lot to talk about today. Today was one of the craziest days that we have seen in a while. So with that being said, Tom, let's not waste any time and let's jump right into it. Yeah, Mike, I think yesterday I mentioned that the SPY could get up towards those all-time highs here, but I didn't think it would happen this quick. Uh, that was a pretty good move today by SPY with the way the tech stocks started roaring up. You could really see on the heat map that the tech stocks really carried the market again, and there were even other parts of the market that were green too, like a lot of the healthcare stocks and, of course, Amazon, some of the retailers and stuff like that. But NVIDIA really stole the show again, Mike, running up the new all-time highs once again, putting the market on its back and getting up 5%. And that was such a crucial breakout today. Also, right around that key $1,200 mark. And for anybody watching the live stream this morning or anyone that was in the Discord, you definitely know that $1,200 was a key, key resistance. And looking at the book map right now for NVIDIA, that was such a crucial breakout there. And once we saw that on the book map, we saw a huge explosion there on the overall move there with NVIDIA. So there were so many good intraday opportunities and multiple different areas for breakouts on this stock. So let's go, Mike. It was a fantastic day, and I hope a lot of people had some great profits. And we'll share some pretty awesome ones later in the video, too. No doubt about that, but uh, some interesting things that we have to talk about a little bit more in depth is that uh, part of this uh, recent uptrend with NVIDIA has to do with this upcoming stock split. So on Friday in after hours is when the stock split will, I guess you could say, uh, start and basically on Monday right around open is when NVIDIA's stock will basically be cut by 10, but all of the shares existing will be multiplied by 10. So for example, if NVIDIA's stock is around $1,200 right now. On Monday, NVIDIA stock would open up around $120 a share. A lot of people have been buying into the stock ahead of this event to, uh, you know, I guess you could say capitalize off of the euphoria. So that's one thing. But of course, NVIDIA as a company has just been crushing it lately, so much so that they're actually uh, now worth more than Apple. They overtook uh, Apple as the second most valuable company in the world. And now there's only uh, one more target get left for NVIDIA and that's Microsoft. Now I'll say this with the way in which NVIDIA is growing. Uh, I don't know how many more days Microsoft has left. Yeah, they're a powerhouse company and they're a powerhouse for a reason, right? Like a lot of these GPUs that they make and a lot of the stuff that they deal with, like AI is such a key part of the economy right now, a key part of the world, right? It's definitely a huge growing sector and it's something that people did not expect, like let's say 10 years ago uh, or else everyone should be millionaires on NVIDIA shares, right? <laughs> but uh, but either way, uh, NVIDIA is doing very well in the short term, Mike, and I'm really glad to see it popping off. Let me know in the comments how many more days you think NVIDIA has left before it passes Microsoft. Um, I'm wondering how long it'll take, Mike, maybe just a month at this point. Who knows? Maybe in just a few days uh, if NVIDIA really keeps up with the way that it was moving today. Like That was such a crucial 5% candle, and looking at the daily chart, there's really like no end in sight, right? So I uh, I like to go to the book map and I'm like, well, hey, what's coming up next? You know, around market close today, I did notice there were some sellers stacked up around 1230. But other than that, there's really not anything too crazy overhead. So maybe tomorrow morning we'll have to see what comes in, maybe hop in the Discord. But I'm definitely going to keep watching NVIDIA up, Mike. It's just one of those one of those things in the short term where you kind of have to feel out the momentum, right? And you have to be very careful and trade in a smart way and keep those stops in place just in case there are those pullbacks. So a lot of people will look at NVIDIA right now and say, oh, wow, it's awesome to see how much it already went up, but uh, what's the move going forward? And while no one can predict the future magically, what we do know is that obviously NVIDIA has a whole bunch of momentum right now. And for as long as it sustains this momentum, there's opportunity with uh, short-term upside plays. But what's more important than literally anything else is making sure that when this 
pullback eventually does come that you're not over leveraged and that you're going to be able to weather that storm if you choose to or just be able to manage your risk. So the main thing is there's a lot of momentum right now and there's opportunity associated with that and when the pullback eventually comes along of course there'll be opportunities associated with that move as well. But for right now the momentum has definitely been on the bullish side. But another thing we have to talk about right now related to NVIDIA and these other tech stocks is how the market is currently uh, very concentrated with them, so much so that the four largest stocks in the S&P 500 have about the same concentration that the market had about 60 years ago. So basically what you can see on the chart right now is uh, the total concentration for the top four stocks in the S&P 500. We can see it has not been this significant significant uh, since like 1965. So what this literally goes to show is that the big bad tech stocks like Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple, and Google uh, have so much of an influence on the market right now where it's like whether you are trading them or you aren't, you have to pay attention to them because they quite literally control the markets right now. So keep that in mind. And you know, when we see Nvidia have massive 5% up days, uh, you already know that uh, helps the market quite a bit. Yeah, it definitely does. And, you know, something else about the concentration chart that I found very interesting is also, you know, I know that this doesn't pertain to anything going on right now, but I found this very interesting is just looking at the types of stocks that are in here, right? Like, look at the top four in 1964. Things have definitely changed. You know, I would never have expected General Motors to be in the top four stocks in the S&P, let alone IBM all the way back in 1964. You know, whenever you think about computers and how far things have uh, came along you know it's definitely interesting but yeah just seeing that concentration is is good Mike and I think that's great for the short term uh, over the long term you know that might get a little bit worrying you know if these tech stocks start pulling back it might start applying more pressure on the S&P but for right now everything's all sunshine and rainbows and it's been pretty good for the past year year and a half I'd say so uh, let's go you know the overall market keeps going and in after hours today, the SPY is pushing new all-time highs. So, you know, we're at a time in the market where uh, it's kind of euphoric, right? And it's just, it's very important to look at stuff like this and to understand where to watch to see where the market's going. Because I'll tell you what, Mike, on days where NVIDIA is starting to make new highs, uh, it's, it's definitely a lot easier to be bullish on the SPY, that's for sure. <laughs> Rightfully so. Uh, when you look at SPY or even QQQ, which is the NASDAQ, both of these broke uh, record highs today, which is great to see. And the only concern that I have is that, uh, you know, when this eventual pullback does happen, I don't want to see people get blown out. So, you know, it's awesome to see people make a bunch of money right now with this recent big tech stock explosion. Just please make sure that uh, you're not over leveraged because I've seen this so many times where we see uh, a great move, uh, whether it's with Nvidia or Tesla or some other stock, only to see traders give all those gains right back to the market just a couple weeks later. So let's trade smart. Let's uh, protect our gains and operate in a disciplined way. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, but Tom, we also had a handful of exciting earnings recently. Uh, one of the top ones today being Lululemon. So looking at Lulu and After Hours, uh, this is uh, giving me uh, some uh, resemblance of NVIDIA kind of. This thing's booming. <laughs> it really is. I mean, Lulu's on fire right here in After Hours. So pretty much from where it closed to where it is now, Lulu went up around 13 or 14 percent. So that's a pretty good move there to the upside out of such a big stock like them. And if we look at Lulu on the daily, they've actually been dipping down quite a bit recently. So with this earnings move, they successfully, I guess, filled the gap, as many would say here, and even did more than that, you know, running back towards 350. That's a uh, pretty big move here. So that's awesome for Lulu. And looking at the rest of the earnings for the week, Mike, we do still have a lot tomorrow. Before open, uh, Neo's going to report. That's one of everybody's favorite Chinese EV companies. So keep your eyes on NIO before the market opens. That'll be a pretty big one. And then, of course, DocuSign will be reporting in After Hours. Quite a few people like that one, too, although not as popular as Neo. I remember back in the COVID days, everyone used to love DocuSign. This stock was, uh, it used to move like Nvidia, kind of. <laughs> not not as crazy, but it used to be a, a high-flying stock, and 
just over the course of a couple of years, everyone uh, seemed to have forgotten about it. But either way, keep a close eye on Neo and DocuSign for tomorrow. Uh, we also do have some economic data later in the week, but it's mainly on Friday with the non-farm payrolls data and the unemployment rate, both of which will be reported before market open on Friday. But we are all set for the good stuff for today, Tom, which are some setups and predictions for tomorrow. A stock I'm watching very closely right now is Enphase. So the solar industry has been doing very well in the short term. Uh, basically looking at Enphase, they have a pretty strong resistance zone coming up right around this like 130 36 to 140 dollar area uh, the stock is holding up in a very good way and uh, even some of its competitors like FSLR have just been uh, rallying in a very strong way lately so overall there have been a lot of inflows into the solar industry and Enphase has been uh, you know again holding up in a strong way and building up more and more momentum so I'm gonna have uh, some close eyes on Enphase to the upside not only for tomorrow but even for like the next couple weeks um, Enphase like many other setups out there will become a stronger setup depending on the price action it uh you know, continues to have. So the more pressure it puts on recent highs and the more it moves up, the more buyers it will attract, therefore making it an even better setup. While, while at the same time, if Enphase, like let's say, um, opens down 4% tomorrow and starts to sell off, then the quality of the setup will definitely decrease. But either way, Enphase is on uh, my radar to the upside. Yeah, it's a very interesting stock, and these uh, solar companies have definitely been blasting off in the short term, and I like how Enphase is a little bit lower than like FSLR, which is like around all-time highs, so I do like that better with Enphase. With my first play, I'm actually looking at Palantir, and Palantir's been moving up pretty well here in the short term. We've talked about it a lot over the past couple weeks, and it's actually starting to break out right above this like 22 to 2240 resistance level, so I'm really glad to see this thing running up here, Mike. It's actually hitting 23 dollars right now if it continues tomorrow and blasts above 23 i will look at a continuation on palantir and i do like the daily chart on it quite a bit as well uh, it's been dipping down quite a bit and forming a pretty good base so i'm kind of looking to play it up off of these uh, lows here all right, sounds good. Another stock I'm watching pretty closely right now is Coinbase. And again, it is to the upside. Uh, looking at Coinbase in the short term, it has definitely been moving in a pretty strong way. And it bounced uh, awesome off that $200 support uh, in the middle of May, which is great to see. Uh, obviously, in the same way that we're seeing the market break all-time highs, and we're seeing a lot of bullishness and euphoria across uh, chip stocks and big tech stocks, uh, we've also been seeing a lot of strength out of the crypto market. Bitcoin is above $71,000 right now, so that definitely helps Coinbase and other crypto-related stocks. But either way, I'm looking at Coinbase in a bullish way going forward. Uh, the more pressure it puts on recent highs, the better the setup will become. It has a lot of resistance coming up around like that 260 to $270 area, but uh, between the current price and like 260 there's some, uh, you know, nice opportunities. So either way, Coinbase is on my radar. Yeah, Bitcoin's been doing pretty good here in the short term. I'll definitely keep it on my radar as well. And with my next play, I'm looking at a stock that is... I would say one of our favorites, Mike, right? I mean, it's good old DraftKings. You know, you can't go wrong with them. They've been doing very well overall over the past year. But I will say over the past, like, month to two months, they have been pulling back pretty hard. Now, they are bouncing off a pretty good support right around 34.50 to 35. And they're starting to come up a bit in the short term. So I'm looking for a bit of a continuation up. Now, I'm not necessarily looking for, like, a full-blown recovery or anything all the way back up to 40. But I think for tomorrow, like, a solid retest of, like, 38 to 3850 could be could make for a pretty good intraday move. So, I'm going to keep watching DraftKings in the short term off of this low and of course for the longer term as well, but uh these short-term opportunities could be pretty good here. All right, sounds great. Well, it's now about that time for today's momentum plays and with the first one, we have MU to the upside. Yeah, chip stocks really went crazy today, and so did MU. And whenever you zoom out, MU's kind of breaking above recent resistance. If they can get above 135 tomorrow, go ahead and look at opportunities to the upside. All right, with the next one, we have AFRM also to the upside. Yeah, Firm, another pretty good day by them. They were up 2.8%. This is not a chip stock or anything, but it's having a lot of good uh, momentum here off these recent lows and support. So if it breaks out above 3140, then go ahead and look at calls or just momentum up. 
All right, and then with the last one, we have good old Tesla for both directions. Yeah, Tesla kind of channeled a bit here over the past couple days and even over the past couple weeks. There's a big support down around like 172. So if it ends up breaking under there, then I will look at opportunities to the downside. If it ends up ripping up above 176.25, then go ahead and look at opportunities up. But Tesla has been pretty weak lately compared to the SPY. All right, so we have the upside level for a potential move higher, and we have the downside level for a potential move lower with Tesla. Don't forget about AFRM and MU as well, but these three stocks are on watch for potential day trades tomorrow if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. Uh, the stronger the stocks move and the more consistent the price action is, the better these setups become. If they do not break the levels listed, then uh, do not play them because we're looking for strong, powerful, consistent price action that'll bring upon even more momentum. But keep a close eye on these ones going forward and let's jump right into today's $443,000 big money trade. And today is, is pretty interesting. So we're looking at ticker symbol AVTE, which is another biotech stock. But what makes this trade so interesting is that, uh, well, technically it is the 20 strike call options that expire on July 19th of 2024. But this trade was actually filled within one minute of the exact low of day for the stock today, which is pretty crazy. I I haven't seen this in quite a while, but basically this option was filled at like 10.08 a.m. Eastern time, uh, which again, it was right around the low of the day for the stock. And looking at AVTE today, it uh, definitely moved in a pretty powerful way. And with biotech stocks, the big money and insider trades with them are always extra interesting because these stocks move so much based off of news or drug approvals or anything like that. So if anyone like has like any... Uh, inside knowledge with you know a drug or treatment that this company might be working on uh, that would be very advantageous information to have and you know considering this big money play is almost half a million dollars it definitely isn't a small trade by any means so either way I thought this trade was very interesting um, it doesn't have like a ton of time to it which isn't necessarily a bad thing and the options are out of the money right now so obviously this will be a little bit more risky than usual, but in the event uh, this stock does move higher, these calls can definitely go pretty crazy. So either way, this one will be close on my radar going forward. Yeah, mine too. This is a very interesting setup and something that I'm looking at with the price action that I really like here in the short term is that it made this low and it started to come up and it actually started dipping back down to go kind of like retest that support. And today was kind of like the real confirmation day on this recovery back up here. So it's forming a bit of a good base down there around like that $15.50 to $16 support. So I'll definitely keep watching this one in the short term. I like this one quite a bit. Again, though, it's a therapeutic company. You never know. Like Mike said, what they're getting in, like why, why is the reason, right? Are they going to come out with something? Uh, are they just buying the dip? You know, like we never know exactly, but we can definitely kind of theorize and let me know in the comments what you guys might think about it. But uh, I do like that price action a lot in the short term and the $20 mark or the, tw or the 20 strike isn't really that far away. It's only like a dollar away from, from around the closing price today. So that's really not too bad at all. It's not like, you know, if it was at like 25, then I'd be really worried about it. For sure, and I'm very excited to see how this one does. Like all other big money trades, you have to give them the time they need. For example, this option expires in the middle of July. So what this stock does tomorrow means nothing. So um, either way, going forward, I will be watching this one very closely. But as we look at the market right now, things are getting uh, pretty exciting pretty quick. Uh, the market is at all-time highs. NVIDIA is ripping to the upside, and it's dragging a whole bunch of other stocks along with it. So uh, this sort of uh, volatility and price action is awesome to see. Like I said earlier, just make sure that you don't give any of the gains that you got from this move back to the market, right? Like make sure you're protected because I've seen this happen so many times. People make a bunch of money off of a big move and then just a couple weeks or a couple months later, they give it right back. So uh, keep your gains. Don't uh, give it back to the market. And uh, before we move on, I want to give a giant shout out 
to today's member of the day, Manny, in the stocked up trading floor. He hit it out of the park today, and this screenshot was from very early on at Market Open, so keep that in mind, but Manny has been such a phenomenal member of the stocked up uh, community for a while now. Uh, he's over, always super positive and uh, overall great member of the community. Huge shout out to Manny. Thank you so much for everything, and uh, definitely keep up all the great work. It's uh, awesome having you in the community, but uh, besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching. The market should uh, get pretty exciting over these next couple days. Yeah, it definitely should. Shout out to you, Manny. You've been a beast lately, so keep it up. And yeah, talking about the uh, overall market, Mike, you know, what was the most popular stock today? It was NVIDIA. And where did the biggest opportunity of the day come? It was that $1,200 break. Anybody that was on the live stream this morning should comment down below and talk about how we were waiting for this breakout all morning. And it didn't come until lunchtime, of course. But uh, but going over and looking at the book map, Mike, uh, you can really see how book map really gave us that opportunity right like you were able to tell that 1200 was a huge level there were tons of sellers stacked up there for a couple days now and to just see it be that strong was amazing and what's even better is that you can actually identify if you zoom in right where that breakout was at 1200 you can see the volume dot hit and if you actually hover over that dot it'll tell you how many volume hit at that price so at this price of 1200 uh 125,000 volume got hit right there so that is definitely a pretty big uh pretty big move there right and once that hit it was a pretty clear breakout so shout out to bookmap i love the platform it's like x-ray vision for the market make sure you guys check out the link in the description down below there is some special deals in there if you guys scroll throughout there as well i really like the quarterly deal i think it's a great uh a great one for global plus there we go all right well thank you all so much for watching let's keep this momentum rolling and let's crush it tomorrow